You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. There are some well-known quarterbacks that have jumped into the transfer portal. Uh, Cade McNamara from Michigan. Uh, Malik Hornsby from Arkansas. Um, Luke Altmaier from Ole Miss. Quarterbacks who, who you know, who you've heard of, you know. And the point I made was that if Jaden Daniels decides to go pro, then Brian Kelly and his staff need to go at a, a quarterback via the transfer portal. And to be clear, we talked about it with Shea Dixon a bit ago as well. I don't, I'm not telling you that I know one way or another what Jaden Daniels is going to do. I mean, if you're an LSU fan, you should desperately want Jaden Daniels to come back for another season. It is, it is nonsensical to want a quarterback with four years' experience to leave. The, the quarterback that's accounted for 65% of your offense, the quarterback that is leading your team in rushing and is thrown for 2,500 yards, it is nonsensical to want him to leave. And that is a, a common uh, fan fallacy, which is you have convinced yourself of something you haven't seen based on recruiting rankings. That, that was all the nuss bust stuff before the season. That's where a lot of people are right now with Walker Howard. And I've told you, I think Walker is going to be great. But I, I think. We haven't seen it. Um, I know what Jaden Daniels is and can be. We saw Joe Burrow have a good 2018 and another worldly 2019. We saw Zach Mettenberger struggle for a lot of 2012 and then become a 3,000 yard passer in 2013. It was incredible before you know, he tore his ACL against against Arkansas. Look at Hendon Hooker last year to this year. The, the transformation and the development. That's that's to be expected. As a, as a quarterback in that position, stays, progresses, develops, improves. And there's no reason to think the same wouldn't happen for Jaden Daniels if he had another year. So, of course, you want him back. The obvious follow-up then, well, what, well, if he does, will people leave? I don't care. Um, but at this point, the way college football is structured, I don't know how you could ignore that that opportunity, if Jaden does leave, to add a, a veteran to your quarterback room. And it's not to say you're adding someone to give them the job. You'd be adding a quarterback to have a veteran option. It's like insurance. I mean, my house is great, but I want I have insurance on my house just in case, right? Um, like Jaden Daniels came here not being guaranteed the starting job he wanted. And if I look back over the last 10 years, the last decade, the most successful quarterbacks that LSU has had have been transfers. Mettenberger, Danny Etling, Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels. I mean, I have a large sample size to suggest to you that you're better off with a transfer. Now, maybe one of the guys on campus now Develops, becomes awesome, and wins a job. That's that's a best case scenario. But look around college football, man. I mean, Caleb Williams is a transfer at SC. He's gonna lead his team very likely into the playoff. I mean, you look at we talked about Jaden Daniels at LSU. Look, look at Bo Nix at Oregon. Look around college football. Look around the SEC. Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. I mean, it's just Hendon Hooker at Tennessee. It's just the landscape of college football now. Quarterbacks generally don't stay. And if they don't, they go somewhere. And the longer they stay, they'll usually succeed. So I'm not saying you bring in a quarterback to hand them the job. But if you're saying right now, like hypothetically, you know, if Jaden Daniels goes pro, then you want to ride with Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, and Ricky Collins. That is, in effect, saying in 2018, after Danny Etling, a transfer, his eligibility was done. You had Justin McMillan, Lowell Narcisse, and Miles Brennan. 
you would in effect be saying the same thing, like ride with the guys you got because you recruited them, you got to trust your staff. No, no, no. You had an opportunity to add another veteran player to the quarterback room, and you did it, and it became the greatest player in the history of your program. You don't just ride with dudes on your roster just because they're on your roster. You should always be trying to make your team better. And it is never, ever, ever, in, in no circumstance, ever, is it a bad thing, is it a negative to add experienced depth at the most important position on the field? I'm not saying you bring in a transfer and just give him the job, but you let him compete. And maybe one of the young guys beats him out. If they do, guess what? You're a turned ankle away from having to go into your bench, and you got a veteran guy right there. I, I cannot understand any argument to suggest that it's a bad thing to try to add experienced depth at quarterback. Man, I got a tweet from a guy because I, I brought up the, the 2018 example. And this might be literally the worst opinion I have ever heard. Like, quite literally, the worst opinion I've ever heard. And the guy was suggesting that well, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up right here, and I'll read it for you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the guy's name because I don't want to give him any more a- attention that he doesn't deserve for anything. <laughs> but this guy said regarding 2018, he said Miles Brennan didn't have the commitment to progress. Also, lack of work ethic, different situations completely. That might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Like literally. So kudos to that guy. For for uh, in a in an ecosystem that generally cultivates a cesspool of awful opinions, that may be one of the worst ever. Let me remind you that Miles Brennan was playing as a freshman because he was committed to the program when they asked him to take a red shirt in 2018 so they could reset the quarterback depth. He was willing to do it and stayed. When weight gain was a problem, dude was setting an alarm clock to wake up in the middle of the night to eat so he could put on weight. When he finally got his chance to play, he tore his abdominal in half and still played a half of football at Missouri with a a, a ripped apart abdomen. Like, if you're criticizing that dude, you're a moron. His commitment, work ethic, you're just a moron. It's rooted in nothing at all. But the point remains, in 2018, you could have rolled with McMillan, Narcisse, Brennan, but you decided to go get a transfer to supplement your quarterback room with some more experience, and it worked. Same thing this year. You could have rolled into this year with Brennan and Nussmeyer and Howard, and you decided, I'm going to go get someone with with starting experience, three years starting experience because it makes my team better, and you're better because of it. And if Jaden Daniels leaves, you absolutely have to go do the same thing again. You've got to go get somebody who's going to add a veteran experience presence in that quarterback room. And maybe one of the young guys beats him out. It would be awesome if it did. It would be awesome. But what if not? I want that option. It is never, ever, ever a bad thing. It is never a negative to add experience and depth at the most important position in team sports. I hope Jaden Daniel stays, but if he goes, they better add a quarterback. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.